Welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2017. I'm Max Scovel, and I'm joined by Dan Tangway and Jen O'Neill from Vicarious Visions. And you are here to talk about Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. It's Crash Bandicoot. He's back. Like, people got all, all worked up when so-and-so walked out with a shirt on, and now we're getting a full... <laughs> this is not just a remaster. Please, give me the, give me the whole spiel about this. It, it, is, it is a remaster, but from the ground up. I mean, every single thing has been recreated, lovingly recrafted in our own engine. Uh, Crash Bandicoot looks better and furrier than ever. Uh, we invested in some new technology to make the fur pop, to make uh, all the graphics look incredibly detailed. And um, we're excited to be here at E3 to show it off. Look at those Wumpa fruits. They're, <laughs> they're, they're so succulent. <laughs> uh, now, like, this is one, one of my huge kind of questions here is, have you retooled the controls at all? Because uh, obviously you can, you can remaster the, the hell out of a game and then it it might still control a little bit like it was 1996. Right. <laughs> so, so as Jen was saying, this is a special kind of remaster. We actually started with the um, original gray mesh level geometry, and that was it. And so on top of that, you know, we've built the, the graphics and the audio, but in terms of gameplay and control, we had to build that all from the ground up again. Okay. And so uh, it really was up to us to decide how it was going to control, but you know, obviously we want it to control as much uh, and as close to the original as possible. Um, so yeah, it. Uh, yeah, we quite spent a lot of time yeah. doing a ton of user testing. We had yeah. fans who had been fans with the franchise from the beginning of time. You know, the speedrunner types as well as brand new. Uh, you know, entrants. Yeah. You know, new new kids. That that's, that'll, that'll yeah, that's be. always kind of the concern yeah, so with you, you know, because adults might have this wonderful you know, these rose tinted glasses of nostalgia, but yeah. you know, you yeah. throw it in a kid's hands and they're like this. This isn't Skylanders, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you guys, you guys also worked on on Crash and Skylanders, so you had kind of we uh, sure that did. we did. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, you got a very special announcement this morning that not only is uh, Crash Bandicoot playable, so is Coco. That's, That's right. right. Coco Bandicoot is play playable in all three levels now. Before she yeah. was just all three games. Sorry, all three games. Yep. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. More than <laughs> more than three levels. There's like 80 yeah. plus. Anyway, um, so sh you know, in the original uh, uh, Warped, she was only playable in a few levels, uh, some of the vehicle levels as well as with her her Tiger Pura. Yep. Uh, but now. We've got her in on-foot levels, and she's not just a reskin of Crash. We were able to spend some time to uh, do a full set of animations that are all her own, her own move sets. Oh wow! So hopefully we'll we'll be able to show you some of that soon. Cool. Yeah, we've got, we've got a bunch of B-roll. We're just kind of rolling, and we're yeah. just you know uh, talking about Crash Bandicoot. Can you talk a little bit about just sort of the the, the community and the and the, the fan reactions and everything? Because I uh, mean, Crash Bandicoot yeah. was, was the PlayStation's original mascot. Yeah, yes. no, the fan reaction's been amazing. It really has. And, um, you know, we knew Crash was big, certainly. Um, how big? That was, th that was the surprise. I mean, we, like, like Jen was saying, we've got a lot of fans on our team. You know, some of the older folks like myself are more nostalgic fans. But then you've got fans who grew up with this game that was part of their childhood, you know, first first mascot character they yeah, ever played. Yeah. <laughs> He's and got the megaphone uh, outside of the Nintendo headquarters. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> and so, you know, the team's been really driving to make sure we hit that quality. So, so we knew it was big. Uh, but then, you know, to give you an example, um, I was in New York City recently meeting with some friend I hadn't seen in a while and uh, meeting his girlfriend for the first time. And she's like, oh, what do you work on? And I'm like, video games. And she's like, oh, Oh, what video game? Like, she's like, no, no, don't worry, though. I don't play video games. It's OK. You know, I'm not going to know what you're talking about. And I go, Crash. And she's like, oh, I love Crash. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so I mean, it's like it has that amount of reach, I think, where yeah, it's just definitely. so many players from 20 years ago played yeah. this game. I'm it's really hoping that it brings back some of those lapsed players, you know, yeah. so we can, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's fan a base. <laughs> easy, to, easy to jump into. It's, uh, it's friendly and, yeah. and familiar. And it's one thing that's really cool is also like, the people who, who grew up playing it, like they have, they have kids now, so it yep. becomes this thing that gets passed down. Yeah, Absolutely. we hear that a lot too. And yeah. we've had, we've had uh, people working on it who have kids at the office, and they'll bring their kids in, and they'll just sit down and start playing it, and pick up and go. Yeah. Now you've been uh, you've been adding some stuff to the game in addition to to Coco. Actually, you know, let's talk about Coco for a little bit. Like, what's oh, there she is. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's she, like I said, she's got her own set of moves. She and you know her her spin attack is a spin kick. She has she has a bit more grace. Uh, a bit more sass, 
when you fail, yeah. she'll uh, turn back and yeah. shake her head she, at you. She, she really doesn't like to lose. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> we found competitive. Yeah. We found that uh, as we were developing her, we really needed to flesh out her personality a little bit more because it, it's not only just her as an NPC or her as driving vehicles, but, you know, she's going to have death animation. She's going to have timeouts, and she's going to react to the world in the same way that Crash does, but she has to do it in her own style, yeah. her own flair. So. And this, uh, you know, this is really a, a gift to the fans. Uh, we really didn't have time to add any new features to the game. We didn't, but, uh, right. <laughs> Because we're fans ourselves. A uh, number of uh, team members really wanted to make it happen. She's such a, she's such a favorite. Uh, so you basically, in the spare time, we do we do game jams from time to time where we get to experiment on yep. you know different kinds of mechanics. And there were some team members who brought her to life in a prototype, and That's we awesome. were all bought in. That's yeah, really cool. that. And then once we were all bought in, we uh -huh. said, okay, now how do we actually get her into the game? Yeah. So you know, we not only built her out, but spent a lot of time to make sure we were integrating her in the right way. Yeah. yeah. Um, because this is still a remaster, and we want to make sure that. Uh, you know, there are some fans who may not want to play with her and just want their original experience. They can have that. Yeah, it's it's and so choose, you, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we set it up in such a way that Coco is optional. You can go up to her in a hub and unlock her, and then you can swap between her and Crash at any point in the hub. But, you know, if you want to have that original tried and true experience, you can have that too. Yeah. So most recently that we I think saw Crash was in uh, was in Uncharted Four when there was the little that little right. snippet of yeah. that first level. And it was so weird to see a PlayStation One game running in a PlayStation Four game. Uh, yeah. Do you have any of like any sort of retro skins or like the original character models if people want to look at them? Mm, we don't. Okay. Um, but certainly uh, fans have requested it. Yeah. So they could play we'll, Uncharted we'll, Four. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. rebuilt the, the game from the ground up. Uh, now I'm uh, I'm very curious. One thing that wasn't that didn't exist officially back in 1996 was was speed runs, and you guys have added uh, time trial. Tri yeah. Trial so um, the third game actually had time trials, oh, really? okay. which was a great innovation at the time um, and a lot of fans even to this day will play time trials in the original games and you know post their footage to YouTube and so we had to put in time trials and then we thought well why not bring that to the other two games and I think for you know the really hardcore fans this is probably one of the most exciting features for them because now they can prove their metal and show off and crash one and two to show off you know how skilled they are Right. But not only that is uh, we can actually announce now this week that we have support for online leaderboards as well. Nice. So uh, not only can you store and show off your times locally, you know, if you're playing couch co-op with your friends, but you can compete with them online or with strangers to get the top time and any of, uh, I think it's like 80 plus levels. Oh, it's wow. Crazy. Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, you know, when you when you get a game, you have to go through it to unlock stuff. Uh, are you able to pick and choose which of which part of the trilogy you jump into first? Absolutely. Any, okay. Anyone. And yep. are, are the levels, the levels aren't completely unlocked, right? You have to still no. play no. through them. <laughs> You'll okay. still have to play through Yeah, you got to play through. the game. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. uh, now, one thing I have to ask about, um, you know what? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that. I have, I have one burning question that I will get to. Uh -huh. uh, but I want to talk just, uh, we see with, with games that Naughty Dog makes, they frequently work in trilogies, and there's this increasing sort of just exponential complexity with what they're what they're throwing at it for people who maybe aren't familiar with the nuances of the different entries in the crash trilogy how do the games differ would you say um well it's interesting because uh they did learn a lot of lessons and actually i think you know while some of the game playing progression got a little more complex between the games they actually got a little more accessible and naughty dog actually reduced the frustration as they went from one to two to three um, you know, and it's just small things, little conveniences about how they're communicating, you know, how many crates you've picked up or how they're doing bonus rounds or something like that. So, so what was really cool about the uh, trilogy we're putting out is we have the benefit of 20 years of hindsight. Right, right. We're doing them all at once. So we can say, well, you know what, this thing really worked in three. Let's kind of make that right. work in one now so that, you know, everything's just a little more convenient, has a little more quality of life to okay. it. Okay. Yeah, that I was just yeah. say one one of the things that I really appreciate personally uh, is uh, we uh, there was a dyna dynamic difficulty adjustment that existed in the later games that we brought all the way through to the first game. So just when you're getting really frustrated and you can't make that jump, uh, we add the uh, checkpoint crates yep. earlier on. The game, oh, that's the so game gives you a little yeah. bit of extra help. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's nice yeah. to hear because honestly, like I'm I I did not do do well in that 
that sequence in Uncharted 4. I, uh, I got <laughs> scolded by <laughs> Nate's wife. Um, now, uh, what was I going to say? Voice cast. You've, ah. got, you've got new new yeah. voices in here? Yeah. So we had to re-record all of the voiceover. Um, just the, the original quality on disc just mm -hmm. wasn't quite up to the uh, quality level that we wanted. So when we could, uh, we got the original actors from the trilogy, uh, but some of them weren't available. And so uh, in those cases, we actually found new actors, but these were actors that have worked with Crash Bandicoot before. So everyone has uh, some tie to the franchise in the yeah. cast. And uh, they sat down and re-recorded uh, the voiceover and had a blast with it. And I think the results show. Okay. Well, that brings me to my, my big burning question. Uh, there's a lot of nostalgia for Crash. And there's another character who Vicarious Visions has also worked on, whose oh. game came out two years later. is a little, little fellow named Spyro. Uh, <laughs> and they've worked together. Obviously, Skylanders was originally sort of a, a Spyro yeah. thing. And burning, Crash showed up there. Question. Yeah. Uh, are you aware of how stoked people are for a Spyro return? Uh, we are certainly becoming aware of yes. that. Yes, we, the fans we, are we've been reading about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's there. I mean, you had a you had a crossover uh, for I think was that a Game Boy Advance? There was there was purple and orange. That's right. Yeah, wow, we worked on that. Yeah, I did some memory. research. I did okay, my, my Crash right, Bandicoot right. deep <laughs> digging. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, obviously you're not going to confirm or deny, but you're you're aware that people do want Spyro, right? Oh, we are quite aware of <laughs> that. Okay. Yeah. There there's been a lot of asks for different things, you yeah. know, ever since we, we started working on this. So yeah. uh, just keep asking, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's cool <laughs> that we get these great yeah. new, huge, emergent, groundbreaking developments in games, but sometimes you want that comfort food, but remastered and, yeah. and delivered in, in 4K, yeah. which is also something you're doing with this. Right. You've got PlayStation Pro support, Yes, right? that's oh, yeah. right. We have Absolutely. PlayStation Pro support, and we've enhanced the resolution of the game for uh, uh, PlayStation Pro. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so you can get just really see the full detail on... on yeah. Crash no, is beautiful, beautiful fur. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, you can you can take a closer look at all those delicious wumpa fruits. Yeah. Uh, no. When is this out in the wild, and when can people get their hands on it? June thirtieth. So you know this yeah, is one like of the yeah eighteen like, super, seventeen days. Super fast. It's, you yeah. can pre-order now. Uh, you know uh, if. If it's available, it's been selling out. Yeah. So well, yeah. <laughs> so definitely pre-order now. Uh, June 30th. It's one of the first games being featured at E3 to come on That's come on out. So if you're jonesing for an E3 title, yeah. there you go. It's, play. it's yeah. coming. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming by. Crash Bandicoot, guys. That's. I get to talk about Crash Bandicoot <laughs> for my job. I like that. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We thank have plenty you. more coverage from E3 coming up very soon. So do not go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs>